Het cursuspakket van handwerken bestaat uit een rijk geïllustreerd boek van ruim 200 pagina's, een werkschrift met patronen van de werkstukken en een materialenset. Wanneer u 49,95 overmaakt op Giro 54, 42, 32 van Teliak in Utrecht, dan krijgt u zo'n pakket thuis bezorgd. Het pakket is ook te koop bij warenhuizen en speciaalzaken. In België kan zo'n pakket besteld worden bij Teliak in Antwerpen door storting van 950 frank op rekening nummer 3 man 0, 056 85 02 82. De radiocursus handwerken van 7 lessen start op dinsdag 26 januari. Tot zover informatie over de cursus handwerken. Voor we verder gaan met de taalcursus Engels, eerst nog even dit. Bij Telejak de komende maanden drie hobbycursussen. De tuincursus Milieuvriendelijk tuinieren in de moestuin. De muziekcursus Rock School 2 over bas, gitaar, drums, keyboards en vocals. En genealogie, een cursus over voorouder- en stamboomonderzoek. Wilt u meer weten? Vraag dan het gratis Teleac magazine aan bij Teleac in Utrecht. U kunt dit magazine ook ophalen bij uw bibliotheek. Tot zover korte informatie over drie nieuwe Teleac cursussen. Dan vervolgen we deze Teleac zondagmiddag uitzending met les 11 van de taalcursus Engels voor gevorderden. De documentaire aan het einde van deze les is getiteld Housing. Dag dames en heren, les 11 alweer van onze cursus Follow Through. Voor de verandering beginnen we vandaag eens met een aflevering van ons detective verhaal Conundrum. Nog steeds is niet duidelijk wie Matthew Gibb heeft vermoord. Is het Alec Lee of iemand anders? Conundrum, episode 11. What are you doing between the hours of seven and eight o'clock on the evening that Matthew Gibbs was murdered? I've told you once. I was with Bernie Raystrick. We came out of the dining room and had coffee in the foyer. That's precisely what Mr. Raystrick says. Well then, you see, it must be true. However, we know that he's lying. He's lying and so are you. Oh. We have a witness who will swear that you were not together for all that time. At 7.45, you left Mr. Raystrick and took the lift. Well, he's wrong, whoever he is. She's a lady called Felicity Curran. And no, she's not wrong. Your friend Raystrick started a conversation with her after you'd left. There's something else as well. When we spoke earlier, you wanted me to believe that you didn't know Matthew Gibbs. You said you'd never met him before in your life. Now, that wasn't exactly true, was it? I met him once or twice before. But he was a friend of yours. Well, not exactly a friend. Well, a colleague, a business acquaintance. Business? Yes. The sort of business that Matthew Gibbs was running from his hotel room. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Lee, we know more about Matthew Gibbs' activities than you think. We know why he went to that hotel and why he'd been to others in the area. Now, let me remind you that we are talking about murder. I don't know anything about that. Then you'd better tell us what you do know about. Not murder, anyway. What then? You know about the video business. You tell us. Gibbs used to make pirate video cassettes. I used to buy them from him and sell them again overseas. Who else used to do it? I don't know any names. I think they were other airline crew. But he was extremely careful to see that we didn't meet. He was worried that we discussed prices, I suppose. So we all used to see him at different times. And your time was a quarter to eight? Yes. Just about the time that he was murdered? I told you I don't know anything about that. He was all right when I left him. You really expect us to believe that? It's the truth. Is it? Well, that would make a change. 
Everything else you've told us so far has been a lie. You lied about not knowing Gibbs. You lied about going to see him. And I think you're lying now. I'm not. Then why did you tell us you hadn't seen him? Why did you say that you hadn't been to his room? Because I didn't want you to find out about the video business, of course. So I had to be pretty careful. Otherwise, I'd lose my job and... It's not just a question of your job. We're talking about murder. Why was Matthew Gibbs carrying a gun? Was he? I didn't see him. Did you ever see him with a gun? No. Did you notice the gun when you went to his house? Whose house? Gibbs! I've never been to his house. I don't even know where it is. Mr. Lee, you're going to have to face charges concerning the video cassettes in any case. But they're not going to be as serious as a murder charge. I don't know anything. Now, I want you to think about that carefully. The more you can help us, the more we can help you. So if you didn't kill Gibbs, who did? I don't know. So we've broken his alibi. We've still got no witnesses and hardly any evidence. There are no fingerprints on that gun, don't forget. So we can't charge him? No. It would be nice to look at his flat, though. And his bank account, if that's possible. Hello, Bernie. It's me. I'm still at the airport. And the police have been talking to me again. I told them I'd been up to Gibbs's room the night he was shot. You told them? What? You idiot. And where does that leave me? If they know you've been lying, they must know I've been lying as well. Well, sir, thanks very much. Thanks very much for nothing. So, that werd Alec Lee niet bepaald in dank afgenomen door Raystrick. Wie heeft kennelijk ook het een en ander te verbergen. Volgende week komen we meer aan de weet. Maar nu heel wat anders. De les van vandaag gaat onder andere over hoe je in het Engels zegt hoe vaak iets gebeurt. Soms, sometimes, vaak, often, haast nooit, hardly ever, nu en dan, occasionally, enzovoort. Kijkt u eerst eens naar een paar scènes en dan kom ik daarna bij u terug met wat uitleg. Never trust the man with an alibi. I beg your pardon. Oh! Oh, hello, Mr. Stenhouse. I thought you were having lunch. So I see. That didn't look like work to me. No, well, it, it's not really. I found it over there. It's quite interesting. And how often do you sit here looking at uh, that stuff? Well, hardly ever. Only occasionally. Every now and then. Well, quite often, I suppose. I see. This is an office, Billy, not a cinema. Yes, Mr. Stenhouse, I know. You're a dreamer, Billy. Yes, Mr. Stenhouse, I know. Only sometimes, though. Too often for my liking. The point is, I hardly ever see you working. You're lazy. You want everyone else to do all the work for you. Oh, but that's not true. Everyone else gets all the interesting work. I get all the boring work. Anyhow, it's my lunch hour. You normally go to some nice restaurant, don't you? Well, I don't earn enough money for that. I have to stay in this office every day with a sandwich or an apple or something like that. I'm not stupid, you know. I've got talent, I've got a brain. But in this job, I'm never allowed to use it. So don't accuse me of being lazy because I'm not lazy. I'm just frustrated. If anyone's looking for me, Corin, tell them I'm out. What's the matter with him? Oh. Karin, take a letter. Yes, Mr. Stenhouse. It's to William Barker. William Barker. Oh, you mean Billy? Yes. Dear Mr. Barker. Shall I make that dear Billy? It sounds more friendly, doesn't it? This, Corin, is not going to be a friendly letter. It's nearly always better to tell people what you think, directly 
Openly, honestly, after this, Ted Stenhouse will respect me. He'll start to recognize that I'm a very talented person. Yeah, I'm glad I told the truth. I cannot tell a lie. That's what George Washington said. And he was given a very important job to do. Tell me, young man, do you generally use parks as rubbish bins? This isn't rubbish. Well, it's not really. If it is lying on the grass, it is rubbish. Do you enjoy life? Not when people like you come into my park, no. I frequently find young people of today have no respect for authority. When I was a boy, I scarcely had time to walk in a park. If I wasn't at school, I was out delivering newspapers or helping my father in his fruit shop. I used to get up at six o'clock every morning and be in bed at ten. No, oh, the good old days, eh? No, if you'll excuse me. You do realise that dropping litter in a park is an offence. And I take a very serious view of offences committed in my park. Oh, come on. But I shall make an exception on this occasion, since I'm in a good mood today. Oh. But I won't always be so generous, so watch out. Yes, thanks. I'm really pleased you're in a good mood. It makes such a difference. Ja, u heeft het misschien al gehoord. In de tweede scène gebruikte de parkwachter zinnen als Do you generally use parks as rubbish bins? Gebruik je in het algemeen parken als vuilnisbak? En de parkwachter zei ook I frequently find young people today Ik merk vaak dat jonge mensen vandaag de dag. En hij zei ook. But I won't always be so generous. Maar ik zal niet altijd zo mild zijn. Nu is het u misschien al opgevallen. Dat er wat verschillen zijn met het Nederlands. Wat betreft de plaats in de zin van zulke woorden als generally, frequently, always. Ik geef u enkele voorbeeldzinnen. En als u die goed bekijkt dan heeft u het systeem waarschijnlijk al aardig door. He often watches television. Hij kijkt vaak televisie. Dat often komt dus voor het werkwoord watches. Maar als er een zogenaamd hulpwerkwoord in de zin staat, dan komt het na dat hulpwerkwoord. He will often watch television. Hij zal vaak televisie kijken. Of he has often watched television. Hij heeft vaak televisie gekeken. En in vraagzinnen. Has he often watched television? Heeft hij vaak televisie gekeken? In uw cursusboek vindt u verschillende oefeningen hierover. En kunt u aan de hand van ook andere voorbeelden met andere bijwoorden, want dit ging over bijwoorden, dan kunt u zien hoe dat in het Engels gaat. Ik laat u nog eens een stukje van de laatste scène zien ter illustratie. Tell me, young man, do you generally use parks as rubbish bins? This isn't rubbish. Well, not really. If it is lying on the grass, it is rubbish. Do you enjoy life? Not when people like you come into my park, no. I frequently find young people of today have no respect for authority. When I was a boy, I scarcely had time to walk in a park. If I wasn't at school, I was out delivering newspapers or helping my father in his fruit shop. I used to get up at six o'clock every morning and be in bed at ten. Ah, oh, the good old days, eh? No, if you'll excuse me. You do realise that dropping litter in a park is an offence. And I take a very serious view of offences committed in my park. Oh, come on. But I shall make an exception on this occasion, since I'm in a good mood today. Oh. But I won't always be so generous, so watch out. Dan nu de documentaire. Sarah heeft een reportage gemaakt over een vogelreservaat in Kent. En ze praat met de beheerder van het reservaat. There are many bird reserves in Britain, and one of them is here at Elmley Marshes in Kent. The Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, which runs this reserve, 
has 350,000 members, and every year, more and more people are taking up bird watching. Now, of the 9,000 species of birds in the world, there are about 500 of them resident in Britain. Many of them stay here all the year round, but others find our winters too cold and emigrate to warmer climates. Others come from colder climates, from Siberia and Scandinavia, to spend their winters here. These marshes are a huge extensive area at the mouth of the rivers Medway and the Thames and uh, for years they've been a haven for wetland birds, wildfowl and waders and so on. And in recent years, uh, the mechanical advances through machinery have made the marshes able to be drained for more profitable agricultural use. And uh, the RSPB saw that a lot of the marshes were disappearing and the habitat which these birds need for survival was disappearing fast. So we decided to come into this area, which is the largest bit that's left, and get quite a sizable chunk to protect for the birds that we've seen today. Can you tell me how many species you have? Well, over the course of a year, well over 100 species, perhaps 120, 130 species. But it's, it's in, in sheer numbers. Uh, the, the huge populations that occur in winter, things like the widgeons that uh, come in as winter visitors. Where do so, they come from, the widgeon? The widgeon breeds over a lot of Central Europe, uh, Siberia, Scandinavia, even, even a few pairs in Britain. But uh, most of the population comes comes from Siberia and that sort of area. And uh, of course they, they find the winters there rather inhospitable. And along with things like the white-fronted geese and the Buick swans, they steadily wake, make their way west through Europe. And by midwinter they appear here. And the numbers are really quite staggering. Something like uh, 20,000 plus widgeon occur during winter and something like regularly 2,000 white-fronted geese. It really is... Uh, quite a sight, mm. uh, far more than, than, than are out on the marsh at the moment. What about food? Do you provide any special or artificial food for the birds? Well, we don't provide any food at all. The, the, marsh, the natural marsh grasses and rushes and sedges and herbs are there for the, for the uh, birds, and um, a lot of them will feed on things like the larvae of dragonflies and water beetles and things like this. But um, we've got a seed here of a plant called the sea club rush and uh, it's not a particularly attractive looking thing but if you start breaking these seeds open you see there's lots of small lots of small seeds in there oh, yeah. and they're, those are incredibly nourishing and uh -huh. they keep the birds going through winter and if you crushed all those up you could probably if you got enough of them you could probably make bread out of it so Goodness. it's just like the grains that we use ourselves really quite a valuable food stuff and that's just one head of club rush in in this huge expanse of the club rush over there um there's countless millions i mean i wouldn't like to hazard a guess and so that provides food the seeds will fall onto the water the wa it'll get carried by the wind to the edge and quite often on on the edges where the, where the wind's blowing you'll get um lots of ducks sort of dabbling away and feeding on these and uh, keep them going through the long hard winter nights can you tell me about the migratory habits of the birds here? The migration role that we actually play is different for different species of birds. Um, I've mentioned some of the ones that actually arrive and spend the winter with us, and they breed elsewhere in colder climates. And the birds that actually breed here in spring and in summer, they, many of them, migrate further south, perhaps to uh, West Africa or the Mediterranean. And we also play a third role, and that's for some of the birds that might breed in, in the far north and winter, perhaps south of the Sahara, they've got to actually stop and refuel. So they actually stop off on our marshes and collect enough food to carry on the migration journey. There's something about the patterns of some of the birds. Some birds actually are resident here, and things that we can hear twittering above us, like this skylark, stay all the year round. We gaan weer terug naar het bureau van Follow Through Productietip. Let u eens op Ted.
aan het begin van de volgende scène als hij zegt dat hij vroeger zomers regelmatig naar dat deel van Engeland ging, maar het nogal saai vond. En gebruik dan die zinswending met used to. Letterlijk vertaald, ik placht. Of in gewoon Nederlands, ik ging regelmatig. I used to go to that part. I used to find it a bit dull. In les 4 zijn we dat ook al tegengekomen, dus daar kunt u het ook in uw cursusboek terugvinden. You know, my sister and I used to go to that part of the country every summer. Tell you the truth, I used to find it a bit dull. But she liked it. And you have to consider other people's feelings. Oh, really? <laughs> no donuts today. It's not my fault, Mr. Rolston. Some days I don't deliver any. Did I say it was your fault, Mrs. Belmont? He didn't say it was your fault, Mrs. Belmont. Good. Tea? Yeah, I guess so. Did you hear about Billy? No. Ted fired him. What? Corrine just told me there's a letter waiting for him when he gets back. But what for? What's he done? He can't do that. That boy will never get another job. He can't throw Billy out just like that. I've never heard of such a thing. Sarah says they had a really heavy argument. Unfair dismissal, that's what it is. Unfair dismissal. There's a law against that. Mrs. Belmont, have you gone deaf? How many times do I have to ask you? I would like a cup of tea, please. I very rarely lose my temper, Mrs. Belmont. But unless you serve me, I'm going to get very angry indeed. I want a word with you. I usually enjoy my work, but not today. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. I've realized I need new horizons, so I've decided to take a Spanish course once a week on Thursday evenings. I'll be able to go to South America and make a fantastic television series. And after that... There's I'm a letter for you, Billy. Oh. I think it's important. Hey, that's my letter! No, no, it, it was a mistake. It was uh, Corin mixed up the names. I'll give you a tip, Mr. Stenhouse. Never do that in the park, or you'll be fined for dropping litter. Zo, onze tijd zit er weer haast op. Ik geef u tot slot nog enkele studietips. U moet natuurlijk heel veel nieuwe woorden leren. Ik heb in een vorige les al eens een keer gezegd dat het zinvol is om nieuwe woorden in beide richtingen te leren. Dus zowel Engels-Nederlands als Nederlands-Engels. En ook om ze te leren in een andere volgorde dan ze in uw boek staan. Maar er zijn nog verschillende andere technieken die u ook kunnen helpen bij het leren van nieuwe woorden. Zo kunt u bijvoorbeeld de woorden die u moeilijk vindt onderstrepen. Tijdens het leren kunt u ook de woorden hardop zeggen. Het klankbeeld dat kan uw geheugen dan een handje helpen. U kunt ze ook op de band opnemen en dan luisteren. Nog eens doornemen. U kunt ze opschrijven en, tot slot, maak er een gewoonte van om ze voor zover mogelijk op te zoeken in de context. Daarmee bedoel ik in de zin, in, in de situatie waarin ze voorgekomen zijn in de lessen. Dat geeft uw geheugen meer aanknopingspunten om ze te onthouden. Dat waren wat suggesties die u kunnen helpen bij het leren van nieuwe woorden. En als u denkt dat u ze kent, u weet het, dan aan de slag. Oefenen. Gebruik ze. Ook al maakt u fouten, zonder fouten kun je geen taal leren. Succes, tot de volgende keer. More and more people in Britain are buying their own houses. But a large percentage still live in flats or houses built and owned by the local council. In London, almost 30% of families live in council accommodation. The standard of council housing has not always been very high. But in recent years, 
architects have been making renewed efforts to design council housing that reflects the needs and wishes of the people who will live in them. A recent development in Covent Garden, central London, illustrates this new trend. We have a site here of one and a half acres right in the centre of Covent Garden. The density of housing very high, 200 persons per acre, as well as shops, community facilities. A lot to get onto a site. We have a mixture here where 50% are for families and 50% are just two bedroom mm -hmm. flats. Mm -hmm. With that mix, we put together a basic unit mm -hmm. and we built up this, built up this unit. Um, it, it starts from uh, taking a family flat, which is an L-shaped flat, and the L forms the garden. So the, the enclosure of the L gives you this, this patio, on top of which is a two-person flat, mm -hmm. a little rectangular flat. So you have an L with a rectangle on the top of it. And that uh, is the very basic unit. It is then put together into a group of 12 flats. That the L varies in its length according to the size of flat, if it's four, five, or six um, person flat. But that is then put together so that you get that unit once, twice, three times, mm -hmm. and four times, mm -hmm. giving you that grouping for half of the site. That half then is repeated on this side. So that is a mirror image of that one. How long have these flats been, been open to the public for and people living in them? Just over two years. Now. Are people happy living there? Th they, I understand, are very happy indeed. I can't tell you how happy I am, really and truly. It's like heaven, honestly. I love it. Well, what do you like about it? Well, the main thing, for me, anyway, is the light and the fact that um, we're not overlooked. We can't hear a sound from the neighbours. The children down below, and I never hear them. Um, the atmosphere, the lookout, everything about the place is just special. We're very glad we did make the move. We're both very happy here. You could speak for yourself as well. Yes, it, uh, <laughs> I was very worried about going into council property, never having ever lived in and I've, I've been more than delighted in this place. Everything has been very, very nice. What sort of things do you like about it? Everything. <laughs> well, when you come out your front door, you see it's in the open air, you don't feel as if you're stuck in a flat. You know, you feel more spacious. Here you've got turnover windows, so you haven't got any problems with finding a window cleaner. Everything about it is, is nice. Very happy indeed here. Yeah. Mr. Ball, are housing projects like this one unique, or is there a hope that we will see many more of them in the near future? I don't think you'll see many more. There's no government money for public housing at the present time. There's a demand for houses with gardens. They're much simpler to build. This building has required a lot of detailed work. You've got to have a first-class contractor. It's got to be built really well if it's going to succeed. I think it's a pity because I do think that inner cities are calling for housing and I think this is a scheme that we could see in not just this country, other inner city situations which could be a way forward. Als u vragen heeft over de lesstof 
vragen over de zomercursussen in Engeland of vragen over de bestelwijze van het cursusmateriaal, bel dan vrijdagmorgen tussen 10 en 12 uur naar de Teliac Phone in. Telefoonnummers 030 956 288 of 030 956 289. U kunt daar ook terecht om gewoon even Engels te praten. Aanstaande dinsdag, smiddags om half drie, is Radioles 12 met een herhaling op donderdag s'avonds om half negen. Teliac Radio hoort u via Radio 5. Dit was het wat betreft Follow Through. Dan nu, Goede Reizen, de taalkursus Duits. U ziet les 16.